it was like we were going through a war zone. There was no sign of anything green anymore. Uh, everything was gray and brown and just salt burn and uh, wind burn. You know, recovering the offices, making sure the staff had a place to stay. We had to get travel trailers. A lot of our staff in Orleans Parish got their homes flooded, so we had to get travel trailers for them and put them at the offices so they can live. Everyone was running on such adrenaline back then. You were dealing with so many uncertainties. You were, you were, you were almost numb, and probably you could, you could even stick your, um, stick a knife in your arm, and you wouldn't even feel it. Those are the voices of Louisiana Sea Grant Extension agents Kevin Savoy, Mark Schecksneider, and Rusty Godet. It's been nearly three years since Hurricanes Katrina and Rita took 1,400 lives, damaged more than 200,000 homes, and displaced 1.3 million people. From the moment the storms cleared, Louisiana Sea Grant personnel have been involved in recovery efforts that most likely will take another 8 to 10 years to complete. But during those first days following the storms, Sea Grant had to redefine its role in a significantly altered coastal zone landscape. Louisiana Sea Grant Associate Director Mike Liffman, temporarily on assignment with the National Sea Grant Office in Washington, D.C. We knew we needed to do something. We didn't quite know what to do. We knew that as a, as a program, we weren't responders. We knew that we were ill-prepared, so we spent a great deal of time on, on preparing ourselves for and addressing any kind of inquiries that would come from around the country, indeed came from around the world. We were getting a lot of inquiries to try to find out, you know, the extent of damages that had, had been inflicted on our coast and on our people. So very early on, and as our agents uh, came back, came back on and started visiting communities where they resided or used to reside. They went around and visited with their traditional audiences. The other thing we did is we participated in and organized quite a few discussions uh, regarding recovery and rebuilding. We piled as much relevant information as we could. We stressed a status report as to the as to the health of our key traditional audiences. And we worked extensively on partnering and trying to network and identifying who is doing what to whom, so that we could avoid duplication if at all possible. And, perhaps collaborating on, on, uh, on response efforts. And then we spent a great deal of time, our agents did, on, 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 on uh, following up on misinformation, disinformation, poor information that existed concerning issues such as the you know, seafood safety. At its central office at Louisiana State University, Sea Grant staff created a clearinghouse of information on the storm's impacts. Extension personnel developed fisheries and fisheries infrastructure damage assessments. New faces were hired to help address this set of new challenges, and new partnerships were formed. We found, too, that as we asked communities what it was it that uh, we could do to help, that we really did not have the personnel or to be able to bring to bear. So our Sea Grant director, a very responsive man that he is, gave us basically carte blanche to allow us to engage New, new disciplines, new backgrounds, fields of and what we needed to do. Our background was primarily in natural resources management, and little did we know about uh, building, uh, building, building codes, land use planning, uh, the like. So we were fortunate enough to bring several people on board, fortunate enough to partner with other organizations to obtain part of people's time, and we began gradually shifting towards new, new disciplines, such as land use planning, buildings, codes, we engaged uh, new departments on the campus. Uh, traditionally, we'd always worked with biological and physical science groups. We now were working with, with the School of College of Design and Architecture, with landscape architects. We engaged other universities. The University of Louisiana comes to mind as an example. One of the Sea Grant Program's first efforts in aiding public officials, as well as private citizens, was development of a series of fact sheets and brochures that explained federal and state regulations in simple-to-understand language. Sea Grant Research Professor Rod Emmer. Through the Sea Grant program, we decided to put out a fact sheet that was prepared by Louisiana people for Louisiana in the language of Louisiana so that the people using it would have information that was practical and very applied to the situation that we were facing down here. We selected topics that were important to people down here. 
such as the increased cost of compliance and also elevations. What does all this mean? In addition, it gave us the opportunity to put together some PowerPoints so that as C-Grant agents went around and gave presentations, they would have the PowerPoints to refer to. One thing we thought that uh, would benefit our agents as well as the people so we had a consistent message is that we narrated the PowerPoint presentations. Funded by Sea Grant, LSU landscape architecture students developed community rebuilding and hazard mitigation conceptual plans for portions of New Orleans and presented their ideas to the Louisiana Recovery Authority. Another set of students explored storm surge and flood protection strategies for the historic New Orleans suburb of Bucktown. A third group of LSU students developed similar plans for the town of Delcombe, located in the southwest part of the state affected by Hurricane Rita. Their efforts were further developed by architecture students from the University of Louisiana at Lafayette, and the town was able to leverage those Sea Grant sponsored plans for more than $2.5 million in grants for waterfront infrastructure and rebuilding the Delcombe fleet. Delcom is an interesting little community. It is a shrimp port. And I made the mistake one time of asking them if we were going to have a crawfish boil. And I was just about run out of town. I was reminded very quickly that there are more than one type of crustacean here in Louisiana, and shrimp happens to be theirs. Delcom is a small community on a waterway south of Lafayette. It's about 25 miles from the Gulf of Mexico. When Rita came through and passed over in the Lake Charles area, this put Delcom in the northeast quadrant, the worst place to be, the highest surges, the greatest winds, the, the zone of destruction. Delcom itself took about 10 feet of water in the streets downtown. The town was completely submerged except for perhaps 10 or 12 houses. Now, after Rita, some of the big national firms came in and discussed what could happen in Delcom. But they forgot uh, one, one detail is that it needed to reflect the character and interests of the people of Delcom and the surrounding area. The locals did not accept the plan because they didn't feel like it was theirs. So we went back and started all over again, basically, looking at what these people wanted to see within their community. To help us get a vision of what was there, contacted the uh, Landscape Architecture Department here at LSU and ask that they have one of their classes come over and visit with the people in Delcom and come up with a vision of what the community could look like if they move forward in, in a particular area. And from this exercise, we got some planning boards, and we also got a report, which gave the locals something to think about. When you finished with that, they were, the people in Delcom were sufficiently impressed to want to carry it to the next step. So we went to the University of Louisiana Lafayette and visited to, with the architecture department. who could give us a slightly different vision of what could happen. Their class also came up with boards after doing public meetings, and they uh, were able to provide a written report, which is more or less serving as the guide for what should take place within Delcom. When we first met with Delcom, it was emphasized to them that they couldn't wait around for the money to simply fall out of the sky. But what they needed to do is be prepared when the money does come that they would, would be the first up and able to explain in detail exactly what they wanted to do with their share of the money that was coming down from the state and the federal government. And true enough, we started having public hearings in 2007 where people were asked, uh, given the future, what do you want to see take place in your community? Delcom was the only one there with a very well organized presentation with storyboards and also a technical report. And the other groups who showed up said, yes, we want to do something. Uh, we'll get around to doing it, but here's some general ideas of what we'd like to have the money for. We walked in and said, this is what we want to see. This is how we're going to do it. These are the people who are going to do it. And here's a report that explains where we're going and why we want to get there.